Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Today I wanted to share with you 10 ways to upgrade your emergency supplies. Lots of times when we start prepping, we get pretty excited. We buy a bunch of stuff, we go through our gear, and we uh, make sure we have the things we need. But then there might be a lull in excitement or we get busy doing our day-to-day -day lives and we forget to actually check and make sure we have the things we need. So these are a few ideas of items to upgrade the supplies that you have or add to a beginning stockpile if you're a beginning prepper. The first most important one is water. Make sure you have extra water. The common denominator of every emergency is that you need fresh drinking water. If you have room to store more, get some. Make sure you have a water purification filter. I think a lot of people are uncertain what makes a good water purification system and so then they hesitate and end up not providing something like that. You don't have to be out in the woods to need to purify your water. There are times when even in your home you may get an announcement that your community is under a boil alert. So rather than boil water, you can use the stored water you have and then filter with your water filtration system any extra water that you need. There are simple ones from the Life Straw up to water bottles that have a built-in water filter to bigger systems like a Berkey. They do come in a variety of sizes and price points, so find one that suits your needs and your budget. Most of us have a stockpile of food, but it's time to upgrade, get some more, have some more variety. If you only have beans and rice, add some canned goods. If you only have canned and packaged goods, Add some long-term foods designed to store for 30 years. Even if you have beans and rice and canned and packaged goods, maybe you're lacking a variety. Do you have some meat stored? Do you have enough fruits, vegetables, different kinds of cereals, oatmeal, pancake mix, things that last on your shelf and are easy to prepare? Look through the variety that you have and make sure there's enough different foods so that you wouldn't suffer from food fatigue if for some reason you needed to just rely on the foods that you have in your home. Many emergencies are amplified by injuries. Make sure you have first aid supplies. First aid supplies in the areas where you spend time are likely to be where you need them in an emergency event. So spread them around your home, your car, your bug out bag, and maybe even have your own personal kit at work at your desk, in your locker, so that you can provide the things that you need and you still aren't reliant on someone else. Sanitation can be a huge problem in a grid down or a water shortage emergency. Make sure you have some sort of a portable toilet. You can find a luggable loo that has a bucket that already has a lid installed. You can buy just the lid. You can buy chemical toilets that are designed for RVs and camping, but whatever you do, figure out what you're going to do. The time when you need to go to the bathroom and there isn't one available is the wrong time to be planning out how you're gonna handle that kind of an emergency. I like the idea of the luggable loo because it's easy to stockpile the supplies you need right inside the bucket. You can have toilet paper, plastic bags, and any kind of supplies for hygiene already combined together. If you want more information on how to use a portable toilet, I'll put a link to a video I made about that. Winter is on the horizon. Do you live in a cold climate? Do you have a heat source? If you have a fireplace, make sure you have enough additional fuel. If that's not a solution that works for you, look over some kind of a portable heat source, perhaps propane, something like that, that is safe to use in your home. Some of them are designed to be used in something like a tent or a patio, and some of them are actually safe to use inside. Recognize that anytime you have a burning flame, you need a source of oxygen because the flame is burning up the oxygen that you have. Along with your portable heat system, it's a good idea to make sure that you have a carbon monoxide detector. Everyone doesn't have them if they don't have gas in their home, but in an emergency situation, you might end up using some propane and then you're going to need to know if you've burned up your oxygen and you're at a risk to carbon monoxide poisoning. Look in the back of your car. 
Hopefully you're finding a bug out bag that has the supplies you need, but a few extra tools might help see you through an emergency. Do you have a crowbar? That can come in handy of helping you get unstuck. A crowbar is also handy because you can also use it for personal protection if your safety is threatened. Do you have flashlights, batteries, candles, matches, and lighters? Upgrade your emergency gear with an oil lamp, some lamp oil, and some wicks. An oil lantern or lamp can burn for hours and hours, days and days, months and months on a gallon of lamp oil. It's the best kind of prep for long-term power outages or living off-grid compared to any of the lighting sources that you could have on hand. I'll put a link to a video on how to use oil lamps and how to trim the wicks to get the most light out of them. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your home and also keep one in your car. Then check them periodically because they do lose their charge and then they're not going to work anymore. Take the time to go over the supplies that you have, inventory them, replace ones that are used up, and discard ones that are no longer useful. And then replace them or upgrade them so that no matter what comes along, you're going to have the things you need. Learn more at alaskagranny.com. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.